This next question is uh, from Rick Tawani. Could you please comment on the differences and benefits of investing in different kinds of index funds? For example, cap-weighted, fundamental-weighted, and equal-weighted. There is nothing like cap-weighted indexing. Uh, it gives you the entire market return. It doesn't care about sectors. It doesn't care about managers. It doesn't care about styles. And in the long run, we know as a fact that it's very difficult for investors to capture the market return as a group. They can't. And uh, so I go with cap-weighted totally. It also is kind of self-executing because people write, you know, if, if, if these hot stocks, whatever they call them, shag stocks or something, uh, sag, rag, what's it called, Mike? Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> uh, uh, when, when they fall apart, uh, the index boom will be over. But the reality is that other funds own those same FANG stocks actively managed fund in, the, in almost the exact proportion as the index fund does. There's just no grounds for that kind of complaint. So, and, then, and, it's, and it's not like we're driving up the price of Amazon if we buy it. We don't, we're not a big factor in that market because you know, we aren't turning the portfolio over. It's just investing new money. Uh, and so it seems to me quite clear uh, that, that that kind of indexing is best. You will find in equal weighted a kind of temptation because, because it's equal weighted, uh, you don't have to, it requires a lot of work to adjust it uh, and keep everything uh, equally weighted. And every once in a while, including the recent, the recent era, uh, equal weighted has done better than, than, uh, than cap weighted. Uh, but it doesn't represent anything but a new way of looking at the market. And sometimes it will do better and sometimes it will do worse. And sometimes it will do a lot better and sometimes it will do a lot worse. So it's, it's just the... The uh, non-predictability of the, of the returns on the equal-weighted portfolio relative to the total market that's going to get people thinking, I should have done this, I should have done that, I'm going to get out of this, get out of that, uh, when those things happen. And so the temptation to change is always great. As for the value, I always thought that whole thing was kind of nutty, <laughs> if you forgive the expression. And, uh, and we had... Uh, my sort of friend, Rob Arnott, uh, brought out this Rappi 1000 fund, and it was, it was a, based on industry fundamentals, dividend yields, earnings growth, book values, even number of employees, things like that that are pretty durable. And uh, he's had a very erratic record, uh, very high, high volatility relative to the 500, and uh, is probably a hair behind the 500 as we speak today. Uh, it was very, very close. He's been ahead a lot of the time, but now he's been behind, and now he's calling for a crash in fundamental indexing. And uh, I don't think that can happen either. I mean, I don't know, the guy's a little bit of a nut. And uh, the, uh, you know, he wrote an article about him in the Wall Street Journal. This is a little anecdote. And the journal reporter called me a big article, actually. And I, she said, well, how, how do you sum up your feelings about Rob Arnott? And I said... I just wish I was as sure of anything as he is of everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, and damned if that wasn't the closing line in the article. <laughs> and I heard from one of his associates that he loved it. He loved it. <laughs> <laughs> what to be said. So, you know, fashions come and go. Uh, and we'll see a little bit more of this in the cash flows as the year goes on and comes to a conclusion and probably next year. But all this talk about about um, value being better than growth. This year, the growth index is up 22.5%, and the value index is up by 10.5%. So that, that kind of thing happens. Call it reversion to the mean. And that's a fundamental thing. You saw the charts uh, yesterday. Uh, and it's always, in my opinion, it's always going to happen. There is no such thing as a permanent solution, a permanent formula, a permanent way to get rich. And... Uh, just enjoy the market return. And you may, you may do better somewhere else. I have no, no reluctance to say that. But, the, but you, you, you don't want to bet your financial future on odds. You know, I got a 1 in 10 percent chance, 1 in 10 chance of beating the S&P. Why would anybody take that? Um, so I'm, I'm very comfortable as life has gone on. And as almost everybody has adopted the S&P or the, or the uh, cap-weighted market cap weighted, weighted by total market capitalization. 
uh, methodology anyone was serious about the business. But there are a few kind of outcasts, outliers, I should say, uh, that do the total stock market. And right now it looks pretty good. I mean, do it, do the, do the equally weighted. So, you know, choose whatever you want. But I think if you're investing for a lifetime, there is no better way to do it. And I will editorialize at this point, and I'm starting to write more about this. I did it to the CFA, too. Just think about this for a minute. You're a, you're a mutual fund buyer, and you buy the best managers that are around looking at past performance, which is not only useful, useless but counterproductive. And we know you start this at 25, and you're going to be investing for the next 75 years. Someone at 25 years old will have a life expectancy of 100 years. So what happens in the next 75 years? Mutual fund, you buy three funds or four funds, good funds, good performing funds. And one, the average portfolio manager lasts eight years. Not 75, eight. Uh, the average fund, well, 50% of them go out of business every decade. So that's 50% and 50% and 50% and 50% and then 25 or something at the end. And so you're going to probably own, we have no way to calculate this, but I think we use, when I gave these examples, that you'll have, well, let me say, 35 different managers in your lifetime. What is the possibility that 35 managers, some of whom have gotten fired for bad performance, some of whom brought in new managers who clean out the portfolio at great turnover cost, uh, some of which come and come, some of which go, none of them are going to live for 75 years, more, more than their present age, and uh, what are the chances that that large number of managers can conceivably uh, outperform someone who is smart enough to pick no portfolio manager at the beginning with the guarantee that he will, his fund will still be run by the same non-portfolio manager at the end. Think about that. So lifetime investing is what we should all be thinking about and not being paid, paid so much attention to what happens every day, every minute, every week. Uh, and, and listen carefully to Jim Cramer to get the best advice we can. 